Would you like to see how those giant electric vehicle batteries are constructed? I love tearing them down and so does my friend Ben up in Vermont. I joined him for a recent teardown of a Volvo battery. Here we go. Now Ben ordered this giant electric vehicle battery from batteryhookup.com. Now Ben used my coupon code, which you can use as well for a discount, and that is David Paws. That should get you a discount, and it also helps out the channel through the affiliate program, so thank you if you choose to do that. When Ben ordered this giant lithium battery, it was dropped off in his driveway in a giant wooden crate. Somehow he managed to get that inside his garage. A week later, I showed up and I helped him with the teardown. And thank you, Ben, for waiting for me to arrive because I love getting to see inside these things. So this is my new Volvo pack. Uh, same type of batteries as we got in the basement. Um, just uh, another six of them. So I just got this. I uh, just started opening it up here. I uh, just opened the box and I'm going to see what's inside. These large tunnels in the middle of a car used to be so that you could hide the transmission and drive shaft running back to the rear differential. Nowadays, this actually came out of a hybrid car, which was front wheel drive, but they used that same space, which we're all so used to, to house the batteries. So this would have given you a very low center of gravity with this heavy battery right in the middle of the car. So that was a good design location for it. Did it arrive in one piece? Show us, uh, yeah, yeah. Arrived. So um, it, it did look like it fell off of the, uh, the skid a little bit here. Um, you can see the frames kind of bent maybe, but, um, but other than that, it did arrive in one piece. So I just pulled all the bolts around the perimeter here. Uh, they were just 10 millimeter, there were a bunch of them. There were a couple of Torx bits needed uh, for a couple of things, but 99% of everything that holds the whole housing and battery together is 10 millimeter hex. So that is another great feature uh, that you guys did at Volvo. So good job, Volvo. So uh, these two here would be the uh, coolant in and out. Um, I think this is power, uh, positive and negative, and then BMS port, I would assume, some sort of communications. Um, I'm not sure what that one is there. Could be power for the pump or something. What have we got here? So we, we got another power in and out or, or another uh, high voltage um, port here. Um, and this had a cap on it. Uh, so I'm not sure uh, what exactly that is, but this is just a cap. There are two long coolant jackets that run down the middle of the battery pack and all the battery modules sit down on top of that coolant jacket and there's rubber o-rings there to seal it out. When we took apart this particular module, it looks like there was some moisture inside. So there might have been a coolant leak. So the first thing I notice in here, there's a little bit of moisture. There's uh, and it actually feels like coolant. I think there was a coolant leak in here. Let's, uh, let's pop these covers open here. See what's in here. Yeah, so there's the connections between the batteries. I'm not gonna touch that because it's probably high voltage at this point. Um, we'll close that up. One thing I notice, uh, right over here is there is a little bit of corrosion as well and it's very wet. So I bet, I bet this battery was taken out of service because there was a coolant leak inside of it. So probably what happened is there was some failure somewhere in the coolant system and Volvo might have pressure tested it found that there was a leak and removed the pack and replaced it in the car. So there might not have been any miles, we don't know, or very few miles on the cells themselves, but they are testing really good. So yeah, so uh, these look like the same modules I have in the basement. Uh, there's six 16S modules. Um, I would assume in this battery, they're all connected in series. Uh, although, Maybe they're connected three and three. 
I'm not no. sure. So no, so sorry. it would all be so yeah. the way that this would have been is you have three in series up to here. This yep. then goes to the fuse disconnect back up to the other side. Uh, the fuse okay. is in the middle of the pack. Yep. So that when you pull that, you've split it into uh, 130, 130. You'll notice when you take apart different batteries, sometimes they have different size modules or they orient them different ways. And that all requires different engineering and different brackets. Uh, and it just adds complexity and cost. What Volvo did here by repeating the design over and over again is they kept their costs low. Yeah, so I love how this is just like, it looks like it's just kind of stuffed together, but somebody probably spent a lot of time on that. Uh, <laughs> and so that's the, the bus bars coming down. In my personal opinion, seeing this design being a repeatable model over and over again down the tunnel is kind of the essence of elegance just simplicity at its core that is just beautiful in and of itself. So I really, really enjoyed taking this thing apart. All right, so I'll just test it with my multimeter here. Just gonna be careful, because this is gonna be high voltage. Try that side and that side. So we got 170 volts flat. And then if I check, let's see. That battery, 56.7. Fifty six point seven and fifty six point six. So they're all pretty equal. That's pretty cool. Each one of these modules is 16 cells in series and is about two kilowatt hours. So we have 12 kilowatt hours total. And Ben breaks this down into a 16 S. So each one of these are already a 16 S. So it's just a matter of unbolting it. There's no spot welding, <laughs> there's, there's no nonsense. Pretty easy. No breaking down all these little modem packs and... Still recording. <laughs> no breaking down modem packs and testing each individual cell and yeah. spot welding them together into a tiny pack. No, so do you uh, wanna I don't have time for that. Down? Yeah, totally. All right. Now these particular cells are lithium NMC or LI-NMC cells. They have a nominal voltage of 3.65 volts per cell and a maximum voltage of 4.2 volts per cell. So fully charged, a 16S group is going to be 67.2 volts. Now a lot of inverters and charge controllers won't go up that high. Ben is using a Solark brand inverter that has a maximum voltage of 63 volts. That means that Ben is charging each cell to 3.93 volts instead of 4.2 volts. So he is losing out on well, maybe about 10 or 12% of the capacity of the cell in that top voltage range that he just can't get to. Now Ben is okay with that, because that will actually extend the life of the cells. If you stay away from the top 10% and maybe the bottom 20% or so of a cell, you can triple its life expectancy compared to just charging and discharging 100% of that cell every time. Now those are rough figures, so uh, it will vary depending on which type of cell exactly you're talking about, but Ben's okay with missing out on that top portion because it means he doesn't have to break down these 16S modules any further. So there's no further customization that he has to do. All Ben is going to do is take this 16S battery module, he'll be adding a BMS or battery management system to that, and then he'll be able to parallel it into his system with all the rest of the batteries. Ben already has a Volvo battery and a Smart for Two battery in his collection of his battery bank powering his home. Ben lives on the grid up in Vermont, but he runs most of the time off grid on his solar system. And he's able to do that because of his large battery bank and his solar converter. Yeah, so these are the little BMUs, the little, uh, I guess it's a computer in there that sends his battery voltage and then sends it back to the main BMS. Both Ben and I are not 100% sure which vehicle this came out of, but we think it came out of a Volvo XC90 
hybrid vehicle, not a full electric vehicle. So there probably would have still been that gasoline engine under the hood. I think, oh, there we go. <laughs> there we go. There it is. Let's see what was going on on the underside. Yeah. So we got all these little nozzles here with O-rings on them. Okay, so one side would be the intake and one side yep. the return or supply return yep, of for the coolant. coolant. Yeah. Sweet. And then this is the end where it would jump from. Yep. No, wait, this would be a plug uh, because it's forcing oh, yeah. it to go yep. through the yep. chiller plates. So how heavy is that one module that you pulled out? Oh, this is, it's about 30 pounds, I would say. Okay. And 25, 30 hours. pounds. Yeah. So just 15 pounds per kilowatt hour. Yeah, that is really light. Yeah. By the way, secret, we, uh, we looked that up in advance. There it is. That was a cool fuse. No ratings on it. They might be hiding underneath the Volvo sticker. Yeah. There it is. There we go. Cool. So, looks like two contactors here. Coil voltage, 12 volts. 450 volt, 150 amp. Those are cool. Mm -hmm. 450 uh, volts DC is hard to break. <laughs> There's a big arc. Yes. And look at all the nickel plating or tin yeah. plating on everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's all so shiny. <laughs> that is neat. Coil voltage, 12 volts. Now each battery module is a two kilowatt hour meaning this full car battery is 16 kilowatt hours. Now, I was geeking out with Ben on how the construction was of this battery. One of the really interesting features were how they ran the long wire, the main power wire, back to the relay module at the end of the battery module. These modules have a BMU on top of each one. So it's not a true BMS the way that we might think of it in kind of our DIY power wall systems. These BMUs would have communicated back to the larger computer in the car. Now that larger computer would have then sent the signal to turn on or turn off those relays, assuming if everything is good in the battery or if there's a problem, turn off the relays and don't let those batteries get either charged or discharged any further. In order to get the power from one length of the battery module to the other length, there are these really long wires that are gonna be carrying all of the amps of the battery. When we opened up this cable, we found that it wasn't uh, a bunch of thin strands of wire. Instead, it was a bunch of flat plates of copper or sheets of copper that were all together. And that is just so neat. Uh, now they would have done this uh, instead of being one solid piece, they did it with multiple thin sheets to allow for a little bit of flexibility. So if the car is going down the road, uh, the vibrations aren't putting stress on those end terminals. Now all in after shipping and discount, this was $132 per kilowatt hour delivered. Now that is a great price considering that these cells are testing as new. Now, if they were heavily used and abused cells, they would not be great. Uh, that price wouldn't be worth it. But given that these are testing as new, that is a great deal. Good job, Ben. And Ben it was able to pick up all these additional little components like the copper bus bars and the relay modules uh, to be able to use in some future projects. So I think overall, this was a great deal for Ben and I love tearing them apart. All right, well, thanks for coming to check out my setup. Uh, if you want to see more on how I built it, uh, go to Ben's Solar and Battery on YouTube and uh, got a bunch of detailed videos on how I put this together. Ben, thank you so much for letting me come up and be a part of the teardown process. I really enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the teardown video and got as much enjoyment out of seeing it as I got tearing it apart. If you enjoy the videos, please like, subscribe, comment, and share.